guys, I'm gonna do a little update on our Mega Sudoku. I think I've taken it as much as I can as far as putting it on a breadboard and testing the circuit. It's really time to put it on a PCB. This is just held together by saran wrap, it's not real. Originally I thought I was going to use this perf board here. You have to actually solder every single trace on this board. I was okay with that, but it is the crisscrossing that really is a problem because you can see here there's a shift register here that controls the segments for this row and that one over here controls that one. So basically there are wires going across. But also there's wires going vertical here. This controls the digits. So there's three wires for each of these digits and then three more here. And imagine if you have eight going this way and nine going this way and you have to have the shift registers, the wires just crisscross so much. And if I'm using this, I can only have one layer, which is the bottom, where I could solder stuff. But at the top, I can't do anything because it will be completely covered with the seven segment displays. So after much deliberation, I decided that I can't use this. So I have to use a custom PCB. Unfortunately, that decision has two problems. One is cost. This is the first PCB I've ever made. It's for the tiny little cube. I don't know if you've seen these. And it's only about one inch by one inch square. I think this cost me five dollars for three copies, which is very reasonable. However, as you can see, <laughs> this one is going to be a lot bigger. It is eight inch by five and a half. And if I remember correctly, when I priced it out, it cost like over a hundred dollars. The second problem is the software that I use to design this PCB, Eagle CAD, has a size limit. The free copy cannot handle a board this size. That's just a limitation. Thanks to the internet, however, I discovered the solution to both of my problems. Through PCB Shopper, I discovered that there are cheaper places to make PCBs. Granted, it will probably be not as nice as these. These are very nice by OSH Park. The solution to my Eagle Cat is I discover ECEDA. Let me show you. They got some really nice tutorials, but I have to be honest that I have not gone through every one of these. There's a lot of material here. Even without reading the whole manual and following the tutorial, I was able to use a software. One interesting thing about ECEDA is the whole thing runs in a browser. So you click here, and I'm still in a browser. I have not downloaded anything, and we are basically in the PCB design tool. So over here is some navigation to go see the projects. A project is made out of two things, the schematic, which is the diagram itself, and the actual PCB. This is just one row of my Sudoku. You can see the three displays here. So this is repeated vertically nine times. The interface is very intuitive. You want to drag something, you just click and drag it around. There's a lot of palettes here. There's preview for the different parts. There's some drawing tools that just draw things, and there's actual wiring tools that lay out the actual wiring. There's a nice keyboard shortcut for just about everything, so you can move very quickly. So I press W, and let's say we want to connect this one to that one. I'm just an example. And then once you're done with that, you can click this guy. Then you can actually lay it out the way you want it on the actual PCB. It also has an auto router, so if you do not want to actually route these different rat's nest wires here, you can just press that button, specify some criteria, and let it work on it. I wonder if it's having trouble because I have some of these outside, so I'm going to stop it and make the board bigger. Like I said, there is a keyboard shortcut for everything. I just press K, and K actually makes sure that everything is visible. So let's say that's our board. We'll run the outer router again. And there it is. So. He just did all that. It's a double-sided PCB. The blue lines are on the bottom side of the PCB. The red lines are on the top of the PCB. And once you get the PCB laid out, you could do a photo preview and you can see what it looked like on the top or on the bottom. But even more interesting, I think, is the fact that once you get that PCB, now I want to actually make this into a physical thing. So it knows that how big your PCB dimensions are, the different kinds of boards you have, the different colors. The default is usually the cheapest one. But they don't tie you down. So if you want, you could actually send this to another PCB manufacturer because you, it will let you download these Gerber files, which is the actual manufacturing file that any PCB manufacturers will print for you. So I'm going to send this out. As you can see, the minimum order is five. 
so I'm not going to need five of them. If you're interested in one, let me know in comments and we'll see what we can do about getting you a copy without have you having to order five of them. So wish me luck guys, I'll talk to you guys later, bye bye.